Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you the basics of working with stored procedures in Microsoft SQL Server. What you'll cover in this short session is all about how to work with simple stored procedures. We'll begin with an explanation of what a stored procedure actually is, and then we'll go through the process of creating a basic procedure using a simple SELECT statement as the basis. We'll show you a couple of ways of executing your stored procedures, how you can modify and make changes to a procedure later on, and finally, how you can delete a procedure that you no longer need. So let's get started. A stored procedure is simply a group of SQL statements grouped together under a single heading. They're similar to methods or subroutines in other programming languages you might have encountered. They've got several benefits, but for me the main ones are their speed and efficiency. So just a quick example of that, I've got a basic query here that's been written to show me a list of films and some basic aggregate statistics about their running time in minutes. We've got a group by clause and order by clause, it's a fairly simple query. If I execute it, it'll spit out a set of results. So there's nothing too complicated there. The downside to this is if I need to run this query many times on a regular basis, I either need to write out this set of code again and again and again, or I need to save the file and then reopen it and run it each time I need to get the results. With a stored procedure, however, if I've created one, as I have earlier, I can execute that stored procedure or that set of code in a much more simple um, and quick, easy fashion. If I execute this page here, I get exactly the same set of results, but without having to either open another file or write out all that code again. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you the absolute basics of how you can get to this stage of having a simple um, stored procedure that you can execute. For our first example, we're going to use this basic select statement to create our first stored procedure. And you can do this with literally any select statement that you've written, it doesn't matter how complicated it is. To use it to create a stored procedure, all I need to do is write a create procedure statement um, above the select statement. You can actually also get away with just writing create proc, which is what I usually do because I'm a bit lazy like that. After the word proc or procedure, you then need to think of a sensible name for your procedure. I always start mine with the letters SP, hopefully for obvious reasons. And this is going to be a basic film list, so SP film list. The only thing you have to do then is write the word as, I usually do this on a separate line, and then that will convert the select statement below into a stored procedure when we execute this code. Before I do execute this page to create my stored procedure, it's worth mentioning a couple of other things. Um, after the as keyword, it's often useful to write a begin and end block to contain all of the statements that belong to your stored procedure. It's not actually necessary in this case because we only have one simple select statement, but in more complex procedures where you're writing many, many statements, the begin and the end block groups all of the useful statements together in one block. Another useful thing that you can do as well is write a use statement above the create statement to make sure that you're going to create the procedure in the appropriate database. So you may have seen use statements before, you can write them above, above simple select statements as well. So I'm going to say to use movies. Now one problem with the use statement and the create procedure statement is that the create procedure statement must be the first statement in a batch. And at this point, use movies is currently the first statement in the batch. The way to solve that little problem is to write a go statement, which um, begins a new batch of statements. That's our quick comment there, begins a new batch. So there we go. Although many of these things aren't actually necessary, you don't have to write the use statement, you don't have to write the begin and the end block. They're useful things to write and it's worthwhile getting into that habit. Now that we've written out all the code, all that remains is to execute this script to create the stored procedure. Now I can do that in the standard ways that I would normally execute a query. And the thing you're looking for, hopefully, obviously, is commands completed successfully down in the messages window at the bottom. Notice that you don't actually see the results of the select statement itself. Um, this, this message refers to the fact that the procedure has been created properly. So let's just check that that's actually happened. Um, to find your stored procedure, you can look in the object explorer. I'm just going to pin it in place just for the moment. And you'll need to look into your movies database, or the database in which you've created the procedure, and look for the programmability folder. In there should be a folder called stored procedures. And I'm going to see there's a few in here already. And in fact, there's the one that I've uh, just created, the one called SP film list. 
It's worth mentioning that this list doesn't always refresh immediately. So sometimes when you come to look at the store procedures list, the one you've just created isn't actually displayed. In that case, what you can do is select the database in which you've created the store procedure and then manually refresh it using the refresh button at the top of the object explorer. And you'll then have to re-expand the programmability folder and the store procedures folder. That's usually enough to force your store procedure to appear. Once you've created the procedure, you've got several choices for how you can execute it. If you've still got the page open in which you used to create the procedure in the first place, in a really straightforward way with such a basic procedure, you can simply highlight the name of it and then execute that. And in the bottom, in the uh, results pane, you'll see the results of the store procedure. Now hopefully, obviously, in the long run, you won't have this page still available. Um, once you've created the procedure, you simply usually discard this. So normally what you would do is have a new query window in which you type in the word exec or execute if you prefer and then the name of your store procedure, uh, SP film list. Now annoyingly if you're using the IntelliSense you may well see that the name of the store procedure is underlined in red it's simply because the, um, the IntelliSense list hasn't yet refreshed. If it annoys you then you can head to the edit menu, choose IntelliSense and then choose the refresh local cache or just press Control and shift and R on your keyboard and after a brief pause that usually clears up the problem. It would have worked anyway um, had I executed this um, but sometimes it annoys, annoys people when they see the red squiggly in the lines. Anyway now that you've written out this simple statement you can execute this page and again that will execute all of the code stored in the store procedure. So now that you've seen how to create and execute a basic store procedure, what happens if you'd like to modify it and change the way that it works? A couple of simple ways that you can do that. If you still have this, the, the script open which you used to create the procedure in the first place, you can simply head back to this one and let's see, well, let's make a really simple change. Let's change the, uh, the order by clause so that it sorts our films in descending order rather than ascending. Now I can't just get away with trying to create this procedure again. If it already exists, if I try to execute this procedure again now, it will tell me that there is already an object called spfilmlist in the database. Fortunately, that's a really easy change to make to make sure that this will work. All I need to do is make sure that the, uh, the word create is changed to the word alter instead. If I execute this procedure now, that will modify and update the way my store procedure works. And if I finally head back to the page that I had created earlier on and re-execute this, I should find that instead of ascending order, my films will now appear in descending order instead. I suppose the next obvious question is what if you want to modify a store procedure and you don't still have the page which you used to create it in the first place? Well, just to show you that that's nothing to worry about, I'm going to close down this page and I'm not going to save the changes. But it's absolutely fine, I, I don't need that page in the first place to modify the procedure. Once it exists and I can access it through my um, object explorer, if I want to make any changes to it, I can simply right click and choose to modify it. And that will open up a new query window um, with all of the code that I used to create the procedure in the first place, with the word alter and a couple of other bits and pieces as well that we don't really need. Um, in fact, all these extra bits and pieces are completely irrelevant to what we're doing um, and I'm going to delete those. So let's see if I wanted to modify this again let's change it back to an ascending order and maybe we could include an extra field as well. Let's see we've got film runtime in minutes let's have the film Oscar wins as well or nominations I've gone for it anyway that will do. If I execute this page again that will update my store procedure. I can then close down this window and I don't need to save any changes and then if I execute my store procedure one more time I'll see that it includes my new field. The final thing to quickly show you in this tutorial is how you can remove a store procedure that you no longer need. Two main ways that you can do this. Um, if you're working in Management Studio the simplest thing to do is to right click on the name of the procedure you want to remove and simply choose to delete it. Uh, you'll be asked to confirm that with a dialog box. I'm actually just going to click cancel in this, uh, this example. You can also choose to remove a store procedure um, by writing a, a statement for that. You can write the drop proc or procedure sp film list which is the name of the one you want to remove and then simply execute that. If I do so 
I'll be showing that my command is completed successfully. Again, slightly confusingly, the uh, the list in the Object Explorer doesn't refresh um, immediately. What you can do is either select the Programmability folder or the Movies database, and then refresh the page manually. And then when you re-expand the Programmability folder and Store Procedures, we should find that the Film List procedure has been removed. So there you go, there's all the basics of how you can create, execute, modify and delete Symbol Store Procedures. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.